So welcome, welcome to the pre-recording of lecture four of MCS 481. Uh, this is the fourth lecture at the start of the second week, and we are now deep into the second chapter of our textbook. Uh, so the lecture for today is, I try to make it as self-contained as possible, but follows the previous lecture where the line segment intersection problem was defined and where we gradually introduced a line sweep algorithm. Uh, today we're going to carefully spelling out, we're going to spell out uh, that algorithm up to the primitives um, so that we can uh, in detail uh, explain the cost analysis. So that will be the main theorem for today at the end of the second section. Uh, this course follows data structures. Uh, so what is a balanced binary tree? Uh, we know what that is, or we know what the main properties are of that. But we will also discuss in this course the data structures that are specific to represent planar subdivisions. Uh, so the doubly edge connected edge list will be introduced in this lecture as well. Okay, what is our problem? Uh, the problem is that we are given a set of line segments, so it is a finite set. Uh, every line segment is represented by a tuple of tuples, so we have a beginning point and we have an end point. The output is a collection of intersection points. Uh, again, a tuple of tuples, uh, where at the first tuple we give the indices, uh, which segment intersected what other segment. And uh, then also the second part of the tuple contains the coordinates of the intersection point. So the picture shows three uh, segments. Um, so the uh, red dots are the beginning and the end points. Uh, the green dots are the in, are part of the output. So in the last lecture, we introduced uh, the notion of an output sensitive algorithm. Uh, so for n line segments, we can have as many as n times n minus 1 divided by 2 um, n intersection points. So for three line segments, you may have uh, 3 times 2 divided by 2. So y you can see uh, how many uh, points that we may have. Um, so the worst case complexity is actually quadratic. So we can have inputs for which the running time is essentially quadratic, proportionally to quadratic. So that is the notion of an output sensitive algorithm. Um, but we want to, so we could be uh, giving up and say, well, hey, we are pessimistic, always expecting uh, the worst time. But notice that these are line segments. So the line segments can actually be quite short and many, many line segments, if you have millions of those, many of those may not intersect at all. Um, so it is quite worthwhile to consider uh, a much better algorithm, especially also that this is a very important problem. If you consider maps, so this is the title of the lecture overlay of maps, so we can look at a map that contains the roads and the rivers, the lakes. Uh, so you may have two maps, but it, and different uh, people have constructed different maps. Uh, it's good as you are touristing a region that you have a map that contains both the lakes and both the roads. Um, so that is the background for why, why this is such an important problem. Okay, so we ended uh, last lecture with stating this algorithm. Um, this 
in this lecture we take a top-down approach uh, so we outline an algorithm and then we refine it so the input and output is restated here it's a line sweep algorithm uh, so there will be events as we have an imaginary line sweeping down uh, we will encounter upper points and the end points of the line segments um, will also become events uh, so but we will initialize the event queue with the upper endpoints of the line segments what is the status again so we have a sweep line uh, the status are those line segments that intersect the sweep line so we could have millions of line segments but we consider only those within uh, a certain uh, height so uh, that's important to separate so we can immediately deal then with uh, line segments for which the y coordinates do not overlap and then we know that they will never be combined so that's actually was the point of introducing uh, the notion of a line sweep so we have events uh, that whenever there is an so we have our line sweep our, our imaginary line that comes down so the uh, points are ordered uh, as far as the height goes uh, so the highest point is on top will be popped off uh, the queue immediately and then there is the handle event point uh, that we are uh, considering so uh, we have balanced uh, binary search trees um, to store both the queue and the status again this is a data structures course but this, uh, this is not a data structures course I'm sorry uh, what is important of these balanced binary search trees is that accessing data uh, is logarithmic in the size uh, that will be important also when it comes to the cost analysis they are balanced um, all right uh, here is uh, the event queue um, also known as a priority queue um, in uh, data structures um, I we on the previous uh, lecture there was uh, a more uh, elaborate definition but i hope to refresh that elaborate definition with an example so we have the root of the tree which is the highest one uh, the highest segments and then we look to the left so the left is the next highest and then the next highest uh, line segments has to its right uh, the segment uh, that is also adjacent to the root so that is also reflected here in the left and the right so you can see that what is important is that as we sweep as we go through um, so you can actually see this event also happening here as the line sweeps uh, past this intersection point the adjacency information changes so in this three data structure we will um, capture the adjacency information so it is important here uh, that uh, this is essentially a sorting operation so if we initialize this uh, we can do this in n log n time the space is proportional to the number of line segments okay so we don't typically have a complete binary tree so uh, but you can see that all the line segments also appear as the leaves of this tree okay um, now uh, what is critical is this subroutine that we have to spell out uh, so that is not a primitive it's not a primitive because it may depend and it will depend on the size of the input so therefore we have to be carefully know what is going on in order to make a detailed cost analysis 
So we are focusing on a new point uh, that is an event point. Um, we are defining carefully three sets. So we have the all the points, all the line segments. So there are three sets of line segments. And a segment is actually a number. Um, so from one in the range one to n. We have the incoming segments. We have the outgoing segments. And then we have the special uh, set C, uh, the segments which contain that point in their interior. Um, so I will give an example. In some sense, uh, the slides are perhaps not in the right order. Uh, but we, for the top-down uh, point, uh, for the top-down development, uh, it's important that we have to compute those sets. And I will explain in the next slide why that is so important. Update the status and test for intersection. All right, uh, why is it so important? Because we can deal with, we can, we may have to deal with degenerate cases. Uh, so here you see this point P, and this point P is kind of the star of this uh, status um, of this event here. Uh, so it is involved in five line segments, um, and we kind of partition uh, the set of line segments into uh, these sets. So we have the segments for which the upper endpoints is actually P, so these are the incoming ones. Um, So here in this example, this is the segment two. So the segment two is an incoming. Uh, so you should imagine before, just before the sweep line reaches the point that two is not yet in the status, but then it becomes to comes into the status uh, when we reach that. Uh, so two is there. Uh, two is not, so the point P is actually not in the interior, so that's why it's not in the C of P. So we have the other points, uh, the segments that have P as their lower endpoint. Um, so you can also say, well, how often does this happen? But you have to be prepared to deal with this. Uh, so this is an algorithm that is supposed to be uh, sufficiently general for this. Um, so we are uh, dealing with cases that may be looking kind of degenerate. Notice that often we deal with integer coordinates. Uh, this could also happen in cases where the resolution of your maps is not fine enough. Uh, so if you only work with two decimal places, then uh, you may encounter that, that two points actually coincide. Okay, um, there is this example for which I can repeat again now the status. Uh, the status is the same as the uh, uh, Q, the balanced binary search tree that was uh, storing the adjacency information. So uh, what happens actually, uh, we have the tree is balanced. Uh, so you would think that the highest point is always uh, the root. Uh, and that was my introduction. Uh, but since the tree has to be balanced, that would not be a good choice as a root. So one is actually a much better case as a root. Um, so you see the tree, the segment, the third segment is adjacent to the first one, and then uh, the fourth and the fifth are adjacent to um, the um, first segment. That's why they are in the left of the tree. Uh, observe that two, so in some sense the line is, I was a bit lazy with uh, the pictures. The line should actually be just up. Uh, above the point, um, so not through the point, as the uh, two is not in this picture here. Um, so uh, this is here the uh, update. So if we update after encountering, 
So you see that uh, the statement, uh, the segment, uh, the, the the segment two is now in there. Um, in a way, four has dropped out. Uh, five has uh, dropped out. Um, so in some sense, this is also laziness of my part. Uh, so. Of, or actually not so we're still focusing on the sweep line as it passes through this point uh, so there is uh, before and after four and five are for which the uh, segments were the lower so they actually are disappearing after encountering the event so that's why in the tree here the four and the five are gone what has entered is two and again, to keep this balanced, uh, two is a nice uh, root for the tree. Okay, um, now we can spell out uh, the algorithm uh, to handle the event points. So you can see that um, this degenerate case can now be handled quite quickly. Uh, so uh, we just report the point. So the point is already given by its coordinates. And um, the intersection, uh, so in some sense this is, um, actually I should have pointed this out also. So the output is actually now a little bit more uh, convoluted. Uh, so the I and the J, it could be that there are many uh, segments here. So in some sense this degenerate point uh, indicates that uh, there might be just more than just a couple here. So in the pseudo code with the output we have not yet adjusted this. But here you see the point. Um, so we have the point P for which it is a lower part of the segment so all these segments that are part they actually have to be deleted also the point is already an intersection point uh, so uh, we don't consider completely degenerate cases where uh, segments are overlapping so an intersection point can appear only once so that's why we also can delete all the segments for which uh, the intersection point appears in the interior. Okay. Uh, now, um, we deleted actually and we inserted them back in. So in some sense, um, it can still happen uh, because uh, so it is reinserted because the adjacency information will change uh, so that's the point here all right um, this looks very complicated and uh, in order to make this norm more complicated let me go to the multi uh, layout of the slides um, so you can see that uh, this uh, continues um, so into um, so the global picture is that the slides themselves are not large enough to contain all. I just want to say that uh, the algorithm continues and there is also a subroutine find new event that is going on. Okay, so let me switch back to single page. Um, So the algorithm continues. So we have to take the left neighbor and the right neighbor. So the ones that are adjacent and see if there is a new event. They may intersect. Else we have to look at the leftmost segment, the rightmost segment, uh, the left neighbor and the right neighbor. And also look for events. So let that sink in a little bit. 
Um, so the algorithm from this point is almost completely spelled out. Um, there is the easy case in case that uh, the, the point uh, P is no longer in the strict interior and is no longer uh, part of an upper the upper point uh, so then this is okay otherwise uh, we need to uh, look at the segments that are adjacent to the remaining segments that are in the status and look for events okay what is this again uh, so the event points are actually intersections uh, so intersection points are the next spot uh, where we go. So we have to check at intersection points. That was the third type of event. So now I'm also deferring to the previous lecture where we discovered that we did not only have incoming upper points for segments and outgoing, but that also the intersection points there are events. And that is actually what this uh, subroutine does. So we are at the end. Uh, so at this point we have spelled out uh, very clearly up to the primitives. Uh, so intersecting line segments is a primitive, can be done in a constant amount of operations. Um, and for that, we defer to uh, the calculus uh, textbooks. Or you should know this by now. All right. Um, one hurdle done. So this is the second part of this lecture. Let's look, about, uh, look at the correctness and then prove uh, the main theorem about the cost analysis. So we have already proven uh, the uh, first lemma stated here. So if two line segments that are both not horizontal, um, and in some sense this is kind of a degenerate case, but we can deal with those horizontal line segments just in case they would share uh, a common point, we could deal with this with uh, slantly perturbing our sweep line. Uh, so, but we have shown that if we have two line segments and uh, if they intersect at the point, then there will be an event point. Um, so where they were adjacent. Um, so in that case, uh, so, and that lemma was important um, because again, you could say it's sufficient it suffices to consider only line segments that are adjacent but are you then sure that you can compute all the intersection points so the importance of this lemma was stated in the previous lecture and this refers to uh, the the importance of this lemma and the adjacency that is maintained in this uh, status all right, so now comes uh, the correctness lemma. So we will find all the intersection points. That is the point here of the lemma. Uh, again, it's important that we have a priority queue where the priority is determined by the height of every point. And we will proceed by induction. So this is a complicated problem but we have this imaginary uh, sweep line that goes down. Um, and uh, we will uh, assume, so first of all, in any uh, induction uh, proof, we have to deal with the base case. Um, so the base case is where the input consists of one segment. We have two event points and no intersection. Fine. Uh, so if we make a proof by induction, we have to state the induction hypothesis. Uh, so we have our sweep line. So, and we assume that above the sweep line, 
all the intersection points. So at the current event point, all the intersection points have already been computed. So, so now it needs to be demonstrated that uh, that point P belongs to one of these three sets. So if it is an endpoint, then it is already uh, found and it is already reported. So we are not going to miss it. Um, if it is not an endpoint, uh, then actually we apply the previous level. So it is actually computed by the adjacency. And this shows the lemma, quad erat demonstrandum. I'm halfway in, 25 minutes this pre-recording, halfway the slides, and uh, you would need a break like this uh, at this point. Um, so at this point, the pause might be warranted. Um, you may be saying, well, why only a lemma? This is just here an important result. We have a complicated algorithm that is correct. Well, you're correct, but this result is a lemma for the main theorem on the cost analysis. So the cost analysis should also include the correctness. Without correctness, there is no point. Okay, let's get into the cost analysis. Uh, so we have an output sensitive algorithm. Um, we are not going to be able to do this in n log n time because of the initialization. So that's actually a lower bound. But then there is the upper bound. And we could say, well, we are happy to say that this is n square. But actually, uh, there is an n can be made more precise. Uh, so the capital I can be n square or of the order n square, but it is actually the number of in intersection points. So this is a very fine uh, complexity results. Also, and uh, it's in the title, so it's an output sensitive. Uh, so this is a result the, in an output sensitive algorithm, the cost analysis contains both dimensions, the dimension of the input and the dimension of the output. Okay, so uh, the initialization of the event uh, queue, so I didn't choose a spelling checker. Uh, so the event queue uh, requires the sorting. So that's actually our lower bound and log and um, so we apply now a result from data structures. Uh, so why working with balanced binary search tree, then actually all the updates, uh, they require log n time. So whenever we have a new event points, this actually kind of uh, illustrates the multiplication, the number of event points. All right. Um, so what is now critical is to show that the number of event points, uh, the total number of event points here, the total number of steps is actually uh, bounded of the order of the number of intersection points. Um, okay, and this will involve some graph theory. So I split also here, uh, perhaps I can go again to the uh, multi page. Uh, so, oh, this is um, so we have the multi page, and it's unfortunately that the statement, uh, the proof starts uh, with uh, on the statement of the lemma. Then we have the connection with Euler's uh, theorem, and that's a theorem, so that's why I stated here. And then we have the application of Euler's formula. So the lemma spans uh, three slides and includes this uh, big theorem attributed to Euler. And again, there is a pause that need to happen, and this will be our first exercise. Um, so graph theory is not a prerequisite uh, for um, this course, uh, but the 
Euler's formula will uh, actually be key in um, arriving at our uh, main cost uh, results. So we have a graph uh, with vertices. So these are the endpoints um, and the intersection points. So we know now what is the number of vertices, uh, two times the number of line segments. So the n is still the number of line segments. We have the number of vertices, n sub v. Um, so that's the next character that is introduced. So then uh, terminology from graphs. Uh, so every vertex has a degree. So these are the number of line segments or the number of edges that uh, this point is an endpoint of. So what we are after is the number of total event points and that is bounded by two times the number of edges. And then we have the, so this is the number of edges is denoted by n sub e. And we have one last character and these are the number of faces. Um, so what is a face? Uh, a face uh, is uh, something that is enclosed uh, by uh, edges. So at least three edges. So think about a face. Uh, the simplest face is a triangle. So and you can relate the number of faces to the number of edges. Okay, so and what does Euler's formula say? Um, in a planar graph, uh, you can look at the faces, the edges, the vertices. Then there is this inequality that states that it's a bound that uh, illustrates the number of faces, number of edges, and number of links them all together in an alternating sign and there is this uh, formula that you can make and that should be at least larger than two. So Euler's formula applies also to higher dimensional problems. As a programmer I found this formula extremely useful to check the correctness of your output. Um, so uh, this is a very easy check. Uh, the purpose of exercise one, and you may already ask, uh, is this inequality, uh, can you have an equality? And when do you not have an in inequality? Well, check for a triangle, check for a tree. Um, so three roots and two leaves, uh, and then you connect the two leaves and you have a triangle. Verify it. Now, uh, the bottom line of this slide is should not be uh, considered that. Um, so it is the sketch. So you should, you may consult, and that's a recommendation. You could consult uh, if you have taken a graph theory course. Uh, it may all come back to you. But it might not be too bad that you understand how to prove uh, Euler's formula. Um, and the proof works by induction. So the tree uh, and then a triangle might be the base cases. Okay, how are we going to use this? Uh, well, it's important here that the cost is actually determined by the number, the total number of event points. And that is bounded by twice the number of edges that we have to consider. Um, why twice? Because we have the adjacency information. So for every line segment, we have to look to the left, we have to look to the right. Um, so the number of line segments here uh, is the number of edges. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm 
Y yes, yes. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, it's important to realize what we actually are going to do. Uh, we have the total number of event points uh, because we express everything in terms of these event points and for every event point we have primitives so we have a constant number of operations um, except that we have to search so there is the logarithmic in the number of uh, total line segments okay um, how does this work here? Uh, well, uh, the number of vertices uh, can be the total number of vertices. So we are going to apply Euler's formula. Here you see Euler's formula. So this is Euler's formula. Uh, we had the uh, number of vertices. So the number of NV. Um, we are the endpoints, two times N, and then the number of intersection points. Um, we eliminate uh, the number of faces by this bound here. Uh, we are not interested in a precise count. A constant is fine. Uh, so 2 over 3 is a nice constant, by the way. Uh, so then we seek to bound uh, the number of edges uh, by the number of input. Uh, so the number of edges in this graph um, is then bounded by this expression here and uh, we see that uh, this involves the intersection points but the constant in front of it there is a constant in front of it so the expression that we have for the total number of edges obtained by the aid of the application of Euler's formula is an expression that is linear in n linear in the number of intersection points so this concludes the main uh, theorem for this lecture. So the total number of event points is uh, linear in and linear in the capital I. Okay, uh, storage. Um, so it could still spoil everything. Uh, so we have the worst case complexity uh, that is n square. If you need to store that much, then you would still end up with uh, an algorithm that is that bad. Um, okay, it's important that we store only the data from the adjacent segments. Um, so the number of event points also can never be more than the number of event points that we consider when we consider the status by this adjacency that's also where the 2n comes in look to the left look to the right so that can that is linear in n all right um, so the storage cost is thus linear um, so that is the o n space here um, so the complete theorem then states the unifies everything. So we have a correct algorithm that is implied. Um, we can compute this set. And again, uh, the uh, first tuple here, it could be more than just a tuple. It could be more than just two line segments. Although if you have two, that most likely characterizes the intersection point. But we can also store there that we have these degenerate cases, just in case. Um, so that's the result. So again, in an output sensitive algorithm, the dimensions of the input and the output are both present. Okay, 10 minutes for 10 slides. Um, so this is a very crowded lecture. So let me introduce the data structures. Um, so um, what is now a good data structures to represent a planar subdivision? So this will be introduced here, the doubly connected edge list. But we will return to this uh, data structure in the next lecture or in later lectures. Okay. So, um, 
what do we want? Uh, we want to know, um, we want to store the information. We have three dimensions, dimension zero, a vertex. Edges are one dimensional, faces are two dimensional. So uh, this already corresponds to what we started with uh, in this uh, course uh, in storing the convex hull of a polygonal region. So we then had the edges that were counterclockwise or clockwise. Uh, might have been confusing which convention to choose. Well, actually, in a doubly connected edge list, we store both informations. So we actually record them in both informations. So that means that we can walk uh, on the boundary of any given face and we can walk in either direction. And that will answer all the questions that are stated here. We can walk, we can go from one face to all the adjacent uh, ones, and when we walk, we visit all the vertices. Okay, so here is the formal definition of a doubly connected edge list. It stores the information. Uh, so this is the list. Uh, it doesn't really say what are all the attributes. Um, so we have a record for each. Here is actually the picture which should have shown uh, earlier. So we have um, four vertices, four edges, and uh, two faces. Uh, so we have the whole, if you like. Uh, we have the entire plane, but then there's kind of the triangle, uh, the triangle, which is the first face. So you could see this somehow in the whole plane, which is F2, the second face here, that uh, there is a, a hole cut out uh, by, these, uh, by this triangle. And you see we can walk from any given uh, vertex. We can follow the edges. We can follow the edges, and every edge has a twin. So we can go forward, but we also can go backward. We can return. So all the vertices are in that sense connected. So we can make a walk from the lowest vertex here, visit all the vertices, and come back to it. Um, you also see the orientations. So we have the one orientation, the counterclockwise for the face F1. So we walk the inner walls, but then when we walk the outer walls, we go to the clockwise convention. Okay, um, so to complete the definition, so we have the records. Uh, so a vertex record stores the coordinate and also stores the information about the edges. Um, so we have references. Uh, so we have names. I'm using the Python uh, connection here, uh, the Python terminology. For every incident edge, we have the name that is represented here. So the, we have named all the edges, and every vertex record stores actually a reference to that name. Then for the faces, uh, so we have the records uh, of the faces, and you might, may now think that this gets completely uh, complicated, but that's actually not true. Uh, so for every face, we have uh, the half edges for the inner components, and then we have the outer components. Um, so we have here F1, which is an inner component of F2. And it uh, suffices that we have a half edge to its outer boundary. And for the inner components of F2, we have one edge to link to the face that belongs to the inner components. So that's the face record as well. Now the edge record uh, contains the 
origin. So there are actually five items for every edge. Where the vertex starts, um, what is the twin, what is the next uh, edge. Uh, so in some sense, this is a linked list, uh, if you like, from data structures. And it's a doubly linked list. So you can go forward, you can go back. So you can go, um, so there is a next in the previous. You change orientation as you go to the twin. So I was almost saying, as I said, uh, the origin where the vertex starts. Uh, we don't have any duplicate where the um, uh, edge ends because we have the twin. So the destination, uh, origin and destination, they're actually the origin of the twin. So that's why we uh, don't have a specific uh, attribute for the destination. It can be derived from the twin. For every edge, we can go to the face to which it belongs. So the face that encloses the edge. Um, an example. Uh, so, and here uh, again, I'm exploiting this feature uh, of the two page. Um, and actually, it's actually not good. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, the picture is over here. Uh, so it's good to actually overlay, and actually I should have um, had uh, the picture to overlay with this. Uh, so you can't really understand properly uh, the table um, unless uh, you actually also see the picture. So, but here is the written uh, part of this uh, exercise uh, of um, the data structure. So this, these are all the edge records. Okay, um, the purpose is that um, we are looking at uh, a triangle inside a square. Draw this, uh, so the coordinates are given and then define all the vertex regers, uh, records, edge regger, records, and face records. So we are doing this with Jupyter Notebooks, uh, and that exercise will be collected um, much later. So no need to worry about this now, but in a Jupyter Notebook, you can uh, nicely format a table with markdown. So this is really a recommended exercise to get somewhere uh, a handling on the uh, data structure that is introduced here. And also you will see in clearly spelling it out that this is really useful for all the queries and all the actions that you want to do on this data structure. Okay, so the exercise two might be most important activity here. Uh, the textbook is very important, so everything is based in the course or most of it is based on uh, the textbook um, so please read it um, Seagull uh, is our software I have been exploring myself the Python interface uh, kind of gradually so that is the third uh, activity here uh, so that will become more and more important for the projects and again, we started with the textbook, uh, we end with the textbook. So the bottom line here is consider those exercises as well. I'm in risk of running over time, but this is quite an important lecture in smack in the middle of chapter two.